I am this close, this close to giving up on this freaking Hoya polyneura. It's not often I feel this frustrated with my plants. I've been trying to treat this damn thing for mealybugs since literally September. It's February. I've had mealybugs before, but I've never had this much of an issue getting them taken care of for some reason. This, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I'm like, <sighs> if I get rid of all my plants, it's because of this Hoya polyneura, this mealybug infested polyneura. I should just toss the thing. I should just throw it away. That would be the logical thing to do at this point. September, October, November, December, January, almost six months of trying to treat this thing and I just can't do it. I even used systemic. Are these like super mealies? <laughs> Immune to systemic? <laughs> they must be. It's been in there. I've watered it into the soil. It's been there since like December and the mealies are still there. It's driving me nuts, guys. Real nuts. I'm gonna leave the diatomaceous earth on here for like days. My next step will be to just like straight up depot the plant, take all the soil off of the roots and dunk it into <laughs> straight up rubbing alcohol because I'm over it. I'm over it. You are getting on my last nerve. You, you guys go away. <laughs> you know what's really messed up? I even think mealy bugs are cute. They're just like small. They remind me of cows for some reason. Small little fluffy white cows. They're cute. Does anybody else think they're cute? <sighs> okay, I'm calm. This mealybug Hoya polyneura situation is curing me of my thought that everybody should have houseplants. Maybe not everybody should have houseplants. And you know why? Because something like this is going to happen at some point. <sighs> and then you're gonna go mad trying to deal with it. <laughs> okay, they're still worth it. I'm being dramatic but it's because the mealies. On the plus side, my other plants are looking real cute. This is the most leaves I've ever had on a philodendron gloriosum because I've always struggled with this plant since day one, but not anymore. Look, it's popping its fourth leaf and the older leaves are looking really, really nice and healthy. Oh yes, they are so beautiful. Wow, I didn't notice until this moment that my dresser was so <laughs> disheveled looking. Perfect depiction of my life. <laughs> Beautiful, but disheveled. <laughs> Definitely a labor of love that I have been working on lately. What it feels like for a long time, I gotta be honest. Making little like mini, well, they're kind, yeah, they're pretty small planters for um, my freaking tree tier Patreon members. This is something I was wanting to do more often, but I'm realizing that these planters take a lot longer than I thought. So next month is probably the only month I'm gonna be doing that but they're gonna be really cute and I hope that they'll appreciate them and the amount of effort, really the pure love that I'm putting into these. But I, I think they're pretty cute. I mean, some of them are a little bit bigger. Some of them are a little bit smaller because um, the bigger ones I started out doing and then I realized that it was gonna take way too long. Oh look, see my initials. I'm gonna add flowers onto them too, but I'm gonna do that at the very end and then do it for all of them at once. I don't know, I'm rambling, I'm rambling. But that's kind of what today's video is. I'm in a rambly mood and I have stuff to get done, but okay, gotta be honest. Usually for these videos, I do make a list of like all the things I wanna get done in the video. But today I didn't do that. So we're just gonna get up to whatever pops into my head, like how a regular real day goes. It's just very like, I'll be doing something, I'll be making broccoli and then boop, Something pops into my head with my plants that I need to do. So then I go run and do it after I turn off the stove. <sighs> but, but you get it? I was just eating lunch and I was thinking, how do I say this? There are a lot of random plant related things and things that I use for my plants in all around my house. Things that I would normally move out of the way, like before I film a clip in a video, um, but I decided I'm gonna go around and show you all of those random things that aren't, like nice looking or are weird that I feel like probably more than just me does. So let me know if you have these random things around your house too. Let's go walk around my house and see all the random shit related to my plants. <laughs> Let's do it. Did you poo poo? No. Oh, 
Hey, it's okay if you did. Guess what? Everybody poop. I'm so scatterbrained because the, I found my phone and then my sister texted me this picture and said, do you like or recognize my yat? Karapika? Don't make fun of how I said that. Anyway, back to what I got initially got distracted by. Can I use dog shares on a human head? The short answer is no. You should not use human clippers on dogs. You can, however, safely use dog clippers on heads. And behind door number one, we have lots going on here, so let's just get started. A sad plant rapidly yellowing. I know something is wrong with this, but I am leaving it here right in the middle of a space I need to use so that I'm constantly reminded that I need to take care of this. But I just keep putting it off and off. It's been sitting here for a long time. I'm gonna repot it someday. A Tahitian Bridal Veil Vine and Mint Variegated Adansonia, Monstera Adansoniae sitting on my counter because I bottom watered them three days ago and they've been sitting here drying before I put them back where they actually live, which is downstairs because I haven't been able to find pots I like for them. We have this asparagus fern, which I kind of bothers me because it's yellowing quite a bit on this side. I truthfully do not know why and it drives me nuts. This is a little stub of an alocasia that once lived on the back of this beautiful throne, but I'm hoping it comes back to life. No idea what went wrong there, but it's really bugging me. I want to move it. And wait, there's more. Here's a pot that I thought I might want to put a plant in, but then it didn't fit in the pot. Now it's still just sitting here until it finds its forever partner and forever home. My philodendron bipenifolium, which I had to move out of the way because it once lived right there where the white butterfly arrowhead needed to take up the space to constantly remind me that it needs to be taken care of. So for now it's right there. Ah, and I almost forgot these plants that I put in the bottom of this plant used in a video that I have yet to move back. I'm gonna put plants at the base of this plant. I just need to find the ones I like. These aren't it. Here is what I've been referring to as my shelf of shame. It's just where I move things that I don't know where else to put them because there's no room because everywhere else is too cluttered. <laughs> Here I have some planters that I have out just until I'm able to find a plant that will fit into them nicely and where I would like for them to live. So they're just chilling there. So I kind of have a tally of what I've got available. This is a plant that dried out way, way too much. I'm actually gonna chop it up and start fresh with this. <sighs> so that's why it's there because I need to do that. But I'm not going to right now. Someday though. And don't be fooled because I actually like the way this whole thing looks up here. Uh, but these are also problem children. So these are just propagations that desperately need to be potted up. And that is a synapsis jade satin that needs to be put into a larger size pot. Looks cute, but they're also trouble. One thing I'm learning about myself on today's plant tour of shame, I take on way more than I can chew. And number two, I get sidetracked very easily, which is why my house is so cluttery. <laughs> Let's continue on friends because we are not done. Oh no, we are not close to being done. Down here I've got a pot of water so that when some of my smaller plants need to be watered I can just easily pop them in there and give them a bottom water. Those are my bugs to feed my other bugs. Um, that one's being bottom watered. Some empty planters that I made. This plant which needs to be up potted. Ugh, really bad. Please tell me it's not just me. I would appreciate it. Just giving you a heads up, my next couple videos are going to be a big box store shopping vlog video and then also a, what was it? Big box store shopping vlog. What was it? How I style my planty thrift, thrift finds video. So I'm really excited for both of those. I hope you will be too. 
Okay, something I'm so happy and excited about is that the variegation on my Galaxy Variegated Money Tree is actually coming back. So you can see on these older leaves, they were like reverting pretty bad. And I'm not even sure why, because I had it under a grow light, but this newest leaf is so much more variegated than it has been for a while. So here's hoping, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I just got a second hand clothing package, so I'm not going to unbox this here. If you want to unbox this with me, then I will be doing a video on my second channel, which I'll have linked down below as well as pinned to the top of the comments. If you want to watch this unboxing slash try on, I found something of value to show you or tell you or I don't know. On my channel, I'm always talking about like how succulents and Hoya, the leaves will get kind of wrinkly when it's time to water them. I don't think I've ever really shown it because it's very infrequently that this happens um, because they are more succulent plants that store water for a lot longer. My little booby cactus, which I will put the scientific name on the screen because I don't, I only know it as booby cactus, is pretty wrinkled. Not at the top so much. It usually happens down at the bottom the most. Yeah, it's kind of all over actually. <laughs> I take it back, but it's definitely more in like this central area. So when you pinch it, there is definitely some give. It's really hard to, <laughs> to show. I hope this is helpful. I don't know. Um, anyway, that is my sign that this plant is using up its water stores. So I need to replenish said water stores and give it a little watering. I found something else. You guys, this is my Monstera Thai constellation. I killed my last one that was actually pretty big. And this truthfully is one of the hardest plants I own or I should say it was until I moved it into, surprise, surprise, yeah, okay, you can't really even see. It's it's sphagnum moss. It's getting a new leaf and this is already a new leaf since I got this plant. Sphagnum moss, pff, sphagnum moss is the way to go for this plant. Uh, it, okay, if, you're, if you have it in soil and you're doing fine with it, whatever, great. But if you're someone that has it in soil or whatever substrate, it's not doing well, maybe try moving it to sphagnum because this has been the biggest game changer. Another quick, I just am in a talky mood, I guess, but another quick observation I made, <laughs> this is a philodendron giganteum variegated. And this is what the leaves normally look like. Very cool and variegated, like very, very mottled. If you are giving the plant too much light, this is what happens. The variegation goes away. These are the two new leaves since being under the light. So the leaves are quite a bit bigger than they were, but they are just not variegated. And this one's even less than the previous. So I'm actually going to move this, I think, next to this north facing window to help bring back some of the variegation. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to show you. Right here, you can see that there's this texture on the leaf, there's like these bumps. And initially I was like, oh crap, I have like thrip. Thrip often leave little little markings like that. So I've just inspected the whole plant. There's no bugs. What I think happened, if you have something like this on your plant and there's no other signs of a pest, it could be, like I said, I moved it un directly underneath a grow light. Something that happened with that is the plant was drying out much, much more. So this leaf, I especially noticed, had a really hard time like opening up from its little, you know, sheath thing like this. So it was kind of stuck in there for a while. And this one has it too. It got like these flaky things. It got these flaky like skin, dry skin looking things on the new leaf, this new leaf and this one that I'm showing you on right now. So when the leaf had a harder time opening up, I think that those flaky bits stayed on like how they are here, like held on to the leaf tissue. And as the leaf opened up, they just didn't fall off and it has made little markings. Like I'm gonna do my best to show you. I can see little skin looking flaky things on here that are not pests and they're kind of translucent. Pretty sure that that's what caused the texture on this leaf. Yeah, and as I wipe it, they just fall right off. You guys, I showed this in like probably my last video actually, so it's not that surprising, but the most of the blooms are still one, two, three, four, five that still need to pop open. Maybe I should do a time lapse next time I notice one of these. Anyway, this is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta that I showed the peduncle of in my last video. Oh, aren't they so beautiful? They're like, they look like, 
fruit gushers, forbidden fruit gushers. You know, I want to eat that. Like I literally just want to, I mean, I guess technically I could because this plant is not toxic to humans, but I don't know if I'm going to. Although they do smell like chocolate covered maraschino cherries, which it is delightful. In the evening time, it gets a lot more potent because it must be pollinated probably by nighttime pollinators. Um, and that's why I think it puts out extra scent at night to really attract them to it. But you can, you walk in my room and it literally smells like this when this plant is blooming, which I seriously love. It's such a treat. So I'm excited to come back in here tonight and be smacked in the face by my Hoya <laughs> Garnosa Compacta blooms. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I promise last thing that I'm gonna let you go, okay? I'm not gonna hold you here all day, um, is I just wanted to show you my foxtail asparagus fern. Maybe I should move you back a little bit. Oh my gosh. This is so beautiful. Look at these long fronds and how beautiful they look like this. They're just, oh my God, all of, all of them were really short down here before. And honestly, since I've gotten it home, these are what it has shot out. So that's been really cool to just kind of see them take over slowly. This is a very like puffy space filling plant. So I highly, highly recommend it. It is like somewhat toxic to humans and animals. It's not like going to kill you, but it can leave you with some stomach discomfort and it can actually like burn your mouths. So you need to be really careful keeping this one where kids have access to and then also pets. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, raise the roof. <laughs> that felt very Michael Scott of me. New elbow leaf. Welcome to the world. Okay guys, I've been bobbing around, chatting with you about my plants for kind of a while now. I'm sure some of you, probably lots of you aren't on this video anymore. So for those of you that are, thank you very much. I think it's time we moved on from this video. <laughs> But like I said, I have a big box store shopping video coming up as well as a how I decorate with my thrifted items video after that one. So I hope you'll enjoy those. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and gushing about the love of plants. It's a good time. I hope it's a good time for you too. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you my next one. Bye. And don't forget to come hang out with me on my second channel so we can unbox my thrifted clothes. See you there, hopefully. Thank you.